This week, I received an email which said, we offer a service that we think would benefit your patients. It is a urine test for toxic chemical exposures like BPA and phthalates. These are chemicals that are in everyday products and can reduce fertility and IVF success. I'm always looking for ways to boost our IVF success rates, but is there evidence that this kind of urine testing is helpful if you're doing IVF? Let's find out. Be sure you watch till the end to hear my Infertility TV bottom line. What is BPA? BPA stands for bisphenol A. BPA is an industrial chemical that has been used to make certain plastics and resins since the 1960s. These plastics and resins are often found in food containers like water bottles and cans. Some research has shown that BPA can seep into food or beverages from containers that are made with BPA. Can you measure BPA exposure with a urine test? Yes. In humans, BPA is broken down by the liver and rapidly excreted in the urine. Urinary concentrations of BPA will accurately reflect recent BPA exposure. Is there any scientific reason that exposure to BPA could be a problem for women trying to get pregnant? Maybe. Some studies in the laboratory and in mice found that BPA could cause chromosome abnormalities in eggs and reduce estrogen production. Is there any evidence that BPA in humans can cause problems with IVF? Well, in 2009, scientists at Harvard University did a small study of women going through IVF. They found that women with higher levels of BPA in their urine produced a few less eggs and less estrogen. Because of their findings in that study, the same group of scientists looked at whether BPA was associated with IVF implantation failure. Implantation failure is when a woman has an embryo placed into the uterus, but it doesn't implant. In other words, she does not get pregnant. In 2012, they published a study which found that higher BPA levels seem to be associated with lower implantation rates. However, they didn't have quite enough women in the study to say for sure whether this was real. Therefore, they did an even bigger study with twice as many women and almost four times more IVF cycles. This study, which was published in 2015, is now the largest study of BPA and IVF success to date. Here are the results. There was no association between BPA levels in the urine and estrogen levels, fertilization rates, or embryo quality. Furthermore, women with high BPA levels had the same implantation rates, pregnancy rate, and live birth rate as women with lower levels. This was sort of surprising to them, so they reanalyzed the data in several different ways, but each time they found the same results. There was no association between BPA and any of these measures of IVF success. What about other environmental toxins? Parabens are a group of chemicals that are widely used in cosmetics, personal care products, medications, and food. There is concern about parabens' ability to disrupt how estrogen works in the body. This 2016 study of 245 women in over 350 IVF cycles found no association between urinary parabens and the number of eggs retrieved during IVF, fertilization rates, or embryo quality. There was also no association between parabens and implantation rate, pregnancy rates, or live birth rates. Another group of environmental toxins are called phthalates. Phthalates, like parabens, are found in a variety of products like body lotions, cosmetics, shampoos, and deodorants. Like the other chemicals we discussed, phthalates are rapidly broken down in the body and excreted in the urine. Remember the scientists we talked about earlier from Harvard who did the BPA study? That data came out of a longer term study called the EARTH study, which stands for Environment and Reproductive Health. They also looked at the impact of 11 different urinary phthalate breakdown products, what we call metabolites, on IVF success. 
two phthalate metabolites were found to be associated with a decreased number of eggs produced at egg retrieval, two were associated with a reduced fertilization rate, and four were associated with a reduction in pregnancy rates and live birth rates. These were meaningful differences. Overall, the live birth rate dropped from about 40% in those women with the lowest levels to about 30% in those with the highest levels. Our Infertility TV bottom line is this. Some types of chemicals like BPA and parabens do not seem to be related to IVF success. Some types of phthalates, but not others, do seem to reduce IVF success. Should you get a urine toxin test? Well, first of all, they are pretty expensive. We don't have any studies which show that doing these tests and adjusting your lifestyle will actually improve your IVF success. Plus, you'll have to pay for more tests to see if your changes are working to lower your levels. Remember, these chemicals are everywhere. It just may not be possible to avoid them enough to make a difference. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars on urine testing, maybe just try following some free tips on reducing your phthalate exposure, like the ones in this article. I'll put the link in the description. In addition to hosting Infertility TV every week, I am a practicing physician. If you would like to have a consultation with me via video, check out my website at ivf1.com. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe to Infertility TV. It's like having a fertility specialist in your phone.